All right, so this is the second part of my interview with Bradford Solomon. Um, we had like a lot to talk about, so I thought I'd break it into break it into two videos. So this is part two. So I hope you enjoy my chat with artist Bradford Solomon. Uh, I want to go into the, a few more because you have a few more paintings here, and I, and I was curious about um, getting yeah. a little bit more into the work. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So this is. Um uh, called Pink Shark. This is the late uh, Ed Moses sitting in the orange chair. I have an orange chair that people come and sit in uh, that I usually paint them in or I have often painted people in the orange chair. Um, but uh, this is at his studio. I actually brought the orange chair to his studio um, in Venice. Uh, and I did this painting uh, about two months before he moved on ahead of us. It's his family um, behind him, his wife uh, and his son, Andy, and, his, and Andy's wife, Kelly Berg, um, and their dog that is named Cat, which I love. Um, but I wanted to play with um, sort of these phallic symbols. Ed was a very uh, virile man, you might say. Um, kind of a reputation along those lines, yeah. uh, along with having virile art that was extremely uh, bold and and influential. Mm -hmm. uh, they live right there at the beach, so there was some elements relating to that. And I was playing with stencils, uh, which I still like to work with sometimes, uh -huh. um, and rollers, uh, using paint rollers and that sort of thing. So it was a there's a different there's a different style to this yeah than than some of the other work it's 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 still really rich with the colors i'm really the gentleman in the 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 chair yeah it's a powerful image i really like the image with these really long legs you know yeah. in, in the front and that odd shirt yeah, yeah. well we put him well we got him dressed he was in his pajamas but we left his pajama pants <laughs> on um he was willing to put a shirt on but this is a man who was not well and the fact that he gave me this kind of time was a great honor yeah. uh, and i've got sketches of him and i've got other reference pictures so i plan to do more work but he was always kind to me i didn't know him well um but he was always kind and 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 he flattered me you know with kind words about my work so that meant a lot so yeah. this was an honor to be able to do and the family was very patient to put up with me. Uh, I mean, I, I really tortured them, if you might, you might say. You know, it's funny. Uh, I think I've been, to, whenever I talk to artists, I know this is gonna sound weird to you maybe, but whenever I talk to artists, I feel like th it's the last bastion, bastion for nobility, you know? Yeah. In the sense that there's always this humility for, for, for people and for things and for moments. And there's this, want to protect it and to to you to you know there's just you know i don't know if you know what i'm talking about but, well, but i think i think the fragility of life should make you humble i mean right really, nobody can overcome a death and and, and 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 although science i did a post recently about the science breakthroughs that you know we're all aware of that can extend life maybe to hundreds of years for people uh and now when I say life, you know, but that's a whole nother thing. But, but the point is we live, you know, we're living by a thread, so to speak. I mean, we don't know if we're waking up tomorrow. How can anyone really walk around uh, thinking they're going to make that much difference in the, in the universe that is so vast and expensive? However, I'm a big believer in love and compassion. And I think that is something I can believe in. Mm -hmm. And when I have children who need me and who I love, um that's real that's concrete that's not an illusion and so that's something i do believe in there's not much for me to believe in I, uh, to be honest i don't believe in much but i believe in that and uh but but certainly you know facing our extinction at any moment when the older we get and i'm 56 you know you have to think about that, I, and I and I do. I haven't lived the most safe, um, you know, healthy life. You might say uh, I feel healthy now, but anyway, it, it it can't help but humble somebody. At least it does me. I I I'm just grateful to wake up and see the sun, as it were. You know, that's fantastic. I I I agree with you 100, percent and I think that 
again, man, that's kind of, that's the point of this thing is for people just to hear these perspectives. You know, when, my favorite poem is by Pablo Neruda, and uh, I referred to it before, but this, on a different portion of it, the beginning of it, it's called Enigmas. And it's about the ocean. I don't know if you're familiar with it. But it, he says, what he's doing is, he, he starts it off with a conversation he's having with someone, who, and, and that they're both looking at the same world differently. And yeah. one guy says, well, he says, you ask me about the wicked tusk of the narwhal, and I respond by describing to you how the sea unicorn with a harpoon and it dies. And I think that's very telling where one person is afraid of a thing and sees it as a, as, as, as a dangerous thing. And the other person sees the exact same thing and wa is watching it die because of the fear the other person had of it. And I mm -hmm. think that that's something we're kind of going through right now. Yeah. We're, we're all looking at the same picture, but we're seeing totally different things in it. And yeah. I think that art, and I think, I do believe this. I do believe this. And I know that people belittle this, but I do believe art saves lives because it yeah. forces you to look at the world through a different lens. Oh, All art. I mean, you know, Churchill's line when they said they didn't have enough money for, for the culture and for the arts said, you know, what are we fighting for when they needed the money for the war? It's, it, it's a cliche line, but it, it, without culture, without art, I don't know what the point is. I mean, again, there's relationship, there's there's love, there's there is relationships with other human beings. That is important. But without being able to express ourselves and relating to humanity and 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 to be able to appreciate uh, the expressions of other human beings, I I just don't. I, I personally wouldn't want to live in that world. Um, so I'm just so grateful that we that we do have that we do have art and we do have an ability to express ourselves. And it's a, it's a great gift and it makes it worthwhile. And so anybody who doesn't have that in their life, uh, it seems some people don't need it and that very well, very well may be, but um, maybe they do need it and they just don't know it. Um, yeah. So if they can, they, I try to talk about getting into the creative stream, you know, whether it's playing some music or, learning to play uh, an instrument or writing some poetry, just get in the creative stream and then you'll appreciate painting more. You'll appreciate all the other arts even more mm -hmm. because your body is starting to relate in certain abstract ways that you'll appreciate all the arts more and your life will be so much richer. I've seen that with my students. I've seen that with fellow artists, you know, my whole life, my family, uh, my, my, my younger brother's UCLA graduate. He's a, Thespian, he's a you know Shakespeare expert. I mean, I've watched him become a painter and a, and a writer. He just finished the second novel, and um, you know, but but once you get into that creative stream, anything's possible, and your life just becomes just expands, you know, in such a wonderful way. I'm just so grateful we have that. That's true. Yeah. Spe speaking of art, in and out French fries, man. Yeah, I mean, gotta love those. That's art, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. French fries, and you got the the texture. I, I mean, they look like what they with the dark. You know how they're slight, overcooked slightly. I yeah, well, it. I did that. I got I got three different versions. You know, kind of yeah. undercooked, regular, and yeah, and well done. But this one's in the Hilbert Museum. Um, you do have different versions. Yeah, I did. I bought three different versions. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so I'd have some different options with textures I mean, with, uh, with value. And um, when the Hilbert Museum added this to their collection, it, it, it became a very, you know, if I can say a very popular image in the, in the collection. And um, to have it hanging next to Millard Sheets and Milford Zorns and yeah. uh, you know, Guy Rose and, and, you know, I mean, it, it was surreal. Um, and it still is, but I thought of it as a, as a still life, like like a bouquet of flowers or a little Andy Warhol-ish. Yeah, and yeah. a pop art element. So I yeah. had some fun with it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's great. It's true. Yeah. And then the lovely Claire here. Yeah. So I'm doing 18 paintings of Claire. Um, I'm on. I just finished 15. It's at the Dowling's house now. This is number nine. She had just started to become a woman. She's nine years old, almost 10. She's becoming something other than a child. She's not a woman yet. Um, so I have this grid yeah. that she's behind and that she's so somewhat ahead of. Um, and, you know, she's you know, been. A 
she's a very interesting young lady, I think. Yeah, I think. she's very interesting, very enigmatic, um, um, and uh, and that's wonderful. Um, you know, I saw her maybe months when she was born, you know, and I saw this baby and I just felt a connection. I can't quite explain it, but um, she was so beautiful. And I thought, I want to paint this, this, this person, you know, every year. And um, they were willing to go down this path with me and, mm -hmm. and Claire puts up with me every year. And um, it's, it's, it's quite a, it's quite an achievement on her part because I was painted by my father growing up and I've had people when I was early on in my years painting people that would say, um, there was a museum curator whose dad was an artist and he had put him through this where he was examining his children through paint and the children didn't appreciate it that much. They did. In fact, they, Bolton Colburn is the artist, uh, the, the person I'm talking about. He used to be the director of Lagoon Art Museum who wouldn't sit for me because he wouldn't want to, didn't want to put himself through that. Uh, Claire has been willing to put herself through that. Um, and so I'm grateful. Well, that's funny because she does have this, I've always thought this about her, you know, and I, I haven't known her as long as you have. Um, and I've met her just a handful of times when I've had a chance to go out to, you know, Orange County and see yeah. her mom. But, um, you know, my conversations with her, I always left with an impression, which I do with a lot of young people is, they know stuff that I don't know. There is stuff in, going on in here that I've either, I've forgotten. <laughs> you know, there's powerful, important things happening behind those eyes. And you can see this wisdom in this painting behind her eyes. Thank you. There's this, there's this wisdom she has. And I think that that's, that's very, very much something she definitely has with her. And she's, yeah. she's very calm. Very All of calm. the, you know, and, and every time you see her, she has this calmness about her, this yep. peace with her that's that man you kind of long for you know in 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 other things and other young people sometimes you know you, yeah. uh, and it's it's so it's really nice that you're doing this for them and yeah for well I, I, I it, it's it was a, it's a collaboration to be sure um and um it's something that i see the world differently every year so every piece that i've done of her is completely different than the one before, whether it's medium or, or subject matter. I mean, I mean, um, composition. And I try to have a comment about time and how time has changed for both of us um, and relationships have changed and that hopefully gets in there. Right. Well, here's a... Yeah. So this is just as, you know, my I'm a homage to Wayne Tebow maybe, uh, something I have fun doing is my food porn, you know, whether it's the fries or the burgers, I've done a lot of cheeseburgers. Um, and I have a ball with the uh, visceral quality of the paint and how I can tell a story of glass and, uh, you know, and the different textures. And as a painter, that's, uh, and like we talked about earlier, it's kind of a challenge to see if I can create sort of an emotional response um, and maybe just an appreciation of everyday things that would make our life richer if we just slowed down a little bit and appreciated every. It's hard every, to. It's, yeah, it's, go ahead. it's hard to describe, but um, it's hard to describe sometimes how artists are able to um, capture certain things, like like you know, and understanding how you did it, like because the because that looks like it's whipped cream. It doesn't look like ice cream. It looks like it's whipped cream. There's, cool. And the, 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 the strawberry ice cream in the glass looks like it's bleeding into the vanilla ice cream under it a little bit. You have this kind of, you can almost smell it. And the slight even almost looks like accidental shine on the chocolate. It looks like it's accidental, but I don't think it is. Yeah. But, it, but it, to make it that rich and makes it look like, I know you have the little drip coming off on the other side. Yeah. But I can almost taste this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I, know I know that might sound like kind of amateurish in, in an appreciation of art, but I I I I tend to just I know that's and and your intent was I don't know what your, it doesn't really matter what your intent was it matters what yeah. I take out of it right right <laughs> yeah so. I'm more interested in what you think than what I think at this point I mean yeah. once I do it 
once I do it, I, I'm bored with my own, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's about communicating something and I've already communicated it as best I can. There's nothing for me to say, really. Yeah. 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 That's good. Say I it. love it. Yeah. It's, thank it's you. really nice. Thank you. Who is this, this gentleman here? So that's Eric Min Swenson. He's a filmmaker, photographer. Uh, he's been chronicling the um, Los Angeles art scene for uh, 10 years, better part of 10 years. And, and we've been friends. I painted him many times. We've done 14 films together, you know, short films, longer films, um, no feature film length, but we've done a lot of work together with films as, a par as partners. The film I did on Tom, Truth and Beauty, I did with uh, uh, St Stan Yan, who's my neighbor. Uh, so I didn't do that one with Eric, but I've done almost all the other films with Eric. Mm. That's great. And, I, and yeah, we didn't get a chance to talk about your, that other side of what you do with the filmmaking, because that documentary is really great. And, and oh, it, took, it looked like it was very, took a long time. You had talked to a lot of people. We did. And, um, isn't it easy to get people? Go ahead. Is it easy to get people to talk about someone else? Uh, well, in this case, talking about Tom, it wasn't hard. I mean, yeah. we had no problem uh, having people to, to volunteer to talk about to talk about Tom. Um, but I've interviewed other people for other things, and I haven't had. I would say people are generally pretty anxious to to, to speak about their work or yeah. or someone they know, unless um, they're Tom. <laughs> Unless they're Tom, yeah. <laughs> well, we heard Tom speak plenty. I mean, I took the art history, and you know, he'd yeah. be up there in the, the podium talking. Yeah, that yeah. Was yeah. His... But but I mean, um, some people enjoy talking more than others, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. People in that film all knew Tom, and so that was a nice experience. It was really nice to see that. I I, was, I enjoyed that very much. So um, so here's an interesting one. Yeah, that's a self-portrait um, <laughs> playing with some, you know, a little bit of humor. But uh, my friend Jan Taylor uh, has this nose thing. It's a kind of a thing they do. Um, so it's just just been a little silly. But I, I, I kind of put the zip in there, the Barnett Newman zip, or to try to talk a little bit about depth and the plasticity of paint. And, you know, I could get into all that, but it's just mainly um, – making you think you know artists tell lies that's all they do i mean it's it's a it's a um it's an illusion so i feel like a great the great liar um trying to tell a three-dimensional lie on a two-dimensional surface is what i do a lot um but it's it's also the lie that tells the truth so there's you know i think it was picasso who said you know artists that lie is a lie that tells the truth but um, I'm not as profound as him, so I shouldn't go, go there. Um, no, but anyway, please. I have fun with this kind of thing. And yeah. it's something I keep exploring, those kind of notions. So you mentioned the zip. And yeah. I know Tom has used, used those before, yeah. too. So uh, there's some people that might be watching and looking at the work, appreciating it, and they heard that term, and they're not understanding what it is. Can you yeah. explain it to people what that is? What the Barnett Newman zip is? Mm -hmm. um, he spent hours explaining it he, he wrote essays on it if you ever watch some of the videos of him discussing what it is um i don't think you can boil it down into one sentence or two sentences he i'm not sure he knew what it was he dispelled a lot of the notions of what it was um but him explaining what it was um i can't i can't put it into words right now <laughs> okay um, so it, people need to then do the research because yeah. I think it's worth, it's definitely worth the research yeah. to learn and to, to explore yeah. that idea. Yeah. Cause I, it, you know, if you're not going to, I'm not even going to try. So, uh, <laughs> try because I would just butcher it. Um, and yet, yet you can't explain it, but yet you know how to use it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think he was just drawing attention to the idea of, of flat surface of, of dimension within a painting and um, breaking up the painting. But he, he pretty much dispelled a lot of the intellectual notions. And he said, it's a, it's a stripe down the middle of my painting. You know, do, do what you want with it. So 
he, but he talked out of both sides of his mouth. I mean, which so many artists do, you know, Bono had a great line, you know, um, art is being in the middle of a contradiction, um, which I personally like that idea of, of being in the middle of a contradiction, um, right. not being clear, not being linear. Uh, it can mean two things at once. Uh, so that's, I think in part what he was after, um, is breaking up the picture plane um, and being two things at once. So that's that's something that I'm interested in. I don't always try to do that in my work, um, but sometimes I do. You know, there's a, it's funny because I when one of the paintings I did in Tom's class, um, I, I kind of used the concept of that, but it, it didn't think of it as a zip, but. It, I thought of it more as a captions on a comic book or something where, yeah. I, where I had one scene from one angle and then for no reason, and there's a little skinny another scene from a totally different thing that was going on. And it was really interesting because I don't know why I did it, but I did it. It was almost like two different paintings, but in a single singular painting. And I remember one of the students in the class was an older lady, got inspired to tell me a story about her grandfather. Because in one section I have, it almost looks like you're looking into a church and there's a long yeah. hallway and there's light coming in. And on the other side, there's a man at a bar sitting with a cup and it's all very sketchy and, and kind of similar to just lazy brush strokes and everything. And, and, and he's reaching down to pick up coin off the floor and he's holding onto a cup. And um, she says that it reminded her of her grandfather who used to sit at the bar. He was, his job was to take machine parts across the river in Italy. Yeah, went to a factory, and he would never do it. He would pay kids coins to do it for him while he sat at the bar and drank beer. And she told uh, me the story uh, about him. And I just love it when your paintings inspire these ideas and things in people that you know you yeah. had the intention of doing this, but you get let let in on something like that. I love that. I think that's fantastic. You know when that happens. Yeah. Um, I'll, you know I'll find that painting. I'm going to send it to you just as a, on the side as a. Oh, I'd painting. love to see it. Yeah. yeah. I'll share share some. I'd love to share some of my work with you later. And I would after. like that. Yeah, and then let's look at this last piece. I love this yeah. too. This is fantastic. Yeah. So my friend William Ray is a painter. Um, he lives nearby, and he came over one day with this, and he said, "This is the record I listened to the Beatles on for the first time and Led Zeppelin." And and I was like, "You're kidding me." He goes, "Yeah, I want you to have it." And I said, "Well, this means a lot to me because I wish I had mine. I remember mine was very much like this." And um, and that experience with music was really my first real love of the arts, was listening to the Beatles, listening to The Who, listening to Zeppelin, um, listening to even, you know, music acts from before that that would be on the radio, whatever it was we could get on the radio, whatever we could get records. Um, and I realized that this is what I should be doing, is being creative and so I learned to play drums and guitar and I started playing in bands and so forth. Again, I wasn't an artist because I wasn't any good at it. Um, and I didn't think I could be any good. And then when I was in my early twenties, um, well, maybe 20, 21, I showed my dad a couple drawings and he encouraged me. And that's sort of when the art started taking off for me. But in my, tw when I was 12, 13, I started playing with other guys and, you know, all the way through teenage years and, and, and into my 20s, uh, music was what it was. And so anyway, this is, this just means a lot to me, this kind of a thing that meant so much to somebody else that I can relate to. So that got in there. Uh, we've been on several trips to San Francisco. We hike a lot together, William Ray and I. And, and so there's that friendship that I think gets into this piece. It's really nice. Thank you, sir. You could. I feel like I could reach in and grab it. Yeah, <laughs> it's really oh, nice. That was fun. It, you, you, know, you might yeah. if I. I mean, I know. I know this is. I'm, I told you it's about you, but I have. It, you, you keep inspiring some stories in me. Right. So the first. Do you remember the first time? Like, there's a thing I talk about in the book, and that I wrote, the creative courage, and this is important for people who want to tap into their own creativity, and it's about moments of discovery when yeah. things happen in your life. Yeah. That put you on a path. A lot of times we don't think about those moments, but they are important to remember and to know what those moments are that, that in, in, it meant so much to you that they yeah. become like a legacy within you, a small little tiny little re remnant of a legacy. Right. And, and knowing those moments, you add those all up and those, those are really who you are and they help you find inspiration and, and encourage you to do things. 
So I think those moments are really important. And you talking about music in the early days. I remember the first time I heard Stairway to Heaven was kind of an interesting time. I was very young. Yeah. And I and I went with my parents to to one of their friends' houses. And the friends that they had had these two older young teenage girls. And I was just the kid. And I was always like, you know, you know, it was boring and awkward and I was shy, you know. And we would we went to the house, I remember one day, and they didn't know what to do with me because the girls weren't there. They were gone, they were doing something else. And I was by myself and I was the only kid there and I was bored. And so mom says, Why don't you go up to 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 the to the girls' room? And there's, there's record albums. Why don't you sit and listen to some music? And I said, okay. So I go upstairs and there's this dark room I walk into and there are these two speakers facing each other and there's a pillow in between them, you know, and where they were, where that, you know, they'd rest their heads, right? And there was a record cube up. And I thought, okay, and I walk into this room and it smells like, like a girl, like, perfume and it smells yeah. like, and it's like this weird foreign place you know that I've been led into and I go and I kind of turn on the record player and I lay down and I rest my head back and right in front of me is a window and it's at night and I can see through the tree branches what's, what's what there's a there's a it's there's a window uh -huh. and there's tree branches oh, I and see. I can see the moon through it and then all yeah. of a sudden you know stairway to heaven starts up yeah and it's blaring through these speakers into my head, and it was like a like like a weird experience. It was like a yeah. weird thing. it was like the, it, it was so I totally will never forget that the smell, the visual, the music, yeah. just, just kind of coming together. And yeah. it was like a great way to hear that song for the first time. Oh man, yeah, that's in your bones. You know, oh yeah, I'll never forget now. that. I'll never forget that that time. And it's so funny. It was just it's just something that kind of hit me just looking yeah. at the record play. Well. You know, nostalgia is is, is, is is something that's put down in the art world because everyone is trying to be so, uh, you know, original or unique. And I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of originality, but not for its own sake. It, when I see too much art that's, um, that, that's trying too hard to be original and has no connection to uh, anything that um, I think has meaning. So, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with bringing memories into it and bringing some history into it sometimes. I, yeah. I think that means more sometimes for me anyway. And so people seem to relate to that. And um, yeah, so I mean, the main thing is being who we are, right? I mean, uh, 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 the most important, I think, you know, people talk about originality and I, this is important. This is something I really believe in is being more of who you are. You know, that's, all we should really be trying to do as artists is be more of who we are because we can't help but be original. We can't help but be authentic and true and honest. And if you just go into your studio or with your music and you just say, what is me? You know, what is more what I am about and how can I relate that the world through this uh, medium myself, then I think you're going to do some, something that has meaning, but, if you go outside and you say, well, that's a cool style. I think I'll do that. Or that I'm sure people will take that seriously. If I paint like this, that's, I see that a lot and not well, of I, that kind of work. Ironically, the work itself is the search for that, right? It's yeah. The search for who you are and the search for the hunt. Right. Cause you'll never really know. I mean, no. you know, yeah. it's funny. You, you even said at the very beginning of this interview, you said something that was not knowing when you're done with your art. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, it's possible that you don't know when to finish because you're never finished. <laughs> yeah. no. We ourselves are never done growing or being who we are. So how could we produce something and have it really be done? Everything kind of just gets taken away from us, as you said. Um, you I know, like that. That's yeah, good. So, uh, um, anyway, so yeah, th I love this. I thought this was fantastic. And you yeah, know what? I'm if you if if you were up for it and you if you feel like talking about some of your films, maybe that we can do some of that next time And if you're up for it. Yeah. To talk, talk about your films um because that's one area that i haven't looked, i have friends that are filmmakers that i'm going to talk to but but I, I like your work and i know i don't know i get you you make sense to me yeah likewise <laughs> likewise i i when i saw your interview with tom you know there's so much stuff out there that you can watch right i mean our brains are being constantly if you put your phone on or your anything on your laptop you're barraged with things to watch and and i was in line at chick-fil-a I promised my daughters I'd go buy them some chicken sandwiches at Chick-fil-A, you know, and yeah. print line. And, and I've got this thing, I'm creeping along in the line and I'm watching this video of you interviewing Tom 
and I'm just totally lost in it. I really enjoyed it. I learned some things I hadn't known before. And I think it's a lot to do with the fact that I relate to who you are and where you're coming from. And if I couldn't relate to you, I don't think I would have watched it, you know? <laughs> well, I appreciate that. That that means a lot. I appreciate it, especially because clearly you're somebody I want to delve more into and learning more about. Well, I'm honored. Um, anyway, thank you for making the time. Yes, sir. And I'm, and uh, this is great. This is like, I, I, we got two videos out of one sitting. I think that's fantastic. Um, <laughs> I appreciate you making the time. So, alrighty. So yeah, everybody, if you like this talk and you're more curious about learning more about creativity, reach out any way you want, subscribe and like, and take a look at some of Brad's artwork. It's fantastic. You're going to find the links in, in, in the post that I'm going to do here, all the links to find all of his work. You can learn all about him and what he does. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate Thank it. You, Alex.